this is the Provoke Prawn, here to show you how to update the BIOS on the Gigabyte Z790 Aurorus Elite AX Ice. This is especially important if you've got a 14th or 13th gen Intel processor, especially the i9 variants. But the logic explored in this video will also apply to other Gigabyte motherboards, so it's important to bear this in mind and to pay attention. I'm going to show you the reasons why you need to update your BIOS and how to do it in a couple of different ways. Now, the BIOS updates are important because they bring the latest microcode changes from Intel. You might find under testing, as you can see here with OCCT, that your CPU gets very toasty under the standard BIOS settings. Now, this could be down to a few different things, including the fan configuration in your system, but it might well be down to problems with the voltage in the V core settings here. If the max gets above 1.5 volts, it is at 1.44 here though, so that's fine. There's a couple of ways to update your BIOS on Gigabyte motherboards. You can use Gigabyte Control Center, which as you can see here, is suggesting there's an update. And we're going from version F2 to version F4. But this actually isn't the latest BIOS update. For some reason, it's not appearing in Control Center. So it's worth bearing in mind. Control Center can be used to update other things, though, including the various different drivers for your system, Intel devices, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. But I would recommend getting the latest BIOS update directly from the Gigabyte website. So head over to Google and search for your motherboard. Obviously, in this case, the Aorus Elite AX ICE or other versions, it's important to make sure you get the right one for your motherboard. Head over to the support page and you'll find there for this motherboard, there's actually two different versions here. So 1.1 and 1.0. It's important to know which revision your motherboard is. So you need to find that out first of all, before you go downloading the BIOS and trying to install it. One of the ways you can find out various bits of information about your system is using CPUZ, which is a free tool that you can download and run. So grab this from the website and then install it. And then you should find in there various different bits of information in there. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the model number here. So there's no revision listed under the main board settings. It does show that we're on BIOS version F2 though, as you can see in the middle there. So it is worth noting that. But if you run CPU Z on your system, you might find that it shows the revision of your board in the model settings at the top here in the motherboard manufacturer listings and that could help solve that problem. Alternatively, if you've still got the box for the motherboard, you should find it on the packaging here along with a serial number so you can see revision 1.0 on mine. The other way to do it is to look at the motherboard itself. So here, for ease of use, you can see that there's a revision 1.0 in the bottom left corner. So hopefully you'll be able to see that in your system. So I need to download the 1.0 revision BIOS from my system there. So I have to click on that, make sure you select the right one. And then in this section, just scroll down until you find the BIOS section there and expand it. You can see the latest version is F5. And also it notes there's an update for microcode 0x129 to address the vCore problems and it'll optimize CEP and power settings as well, which I'll get to in a second. Download whatever the latest BIOS is at the time of doing it. So make sure you grab the latest version and that'll come in a little folder which you'll need to extract in order to make sure that you can run it properly. So what I'd recommend doing is using a USB thumb drive in order to extract those files to that, just so that they're easy to find. You can extract it to somewhere on your machine as long as you can remember where that is and then go and find it in the BIOS. But I find it easier if you happen to have one to use a thumb drive to do that. So plug in a USB drive to the back of your machine, make sure it's clear of anything else and go about formatting it. So you can grab the drive up here, for example, you can see this drive has already got stuff on it. We don't want to get any confusion going on there. So just format it by right clicking, click format, FAT32, and naturally you will lose any data that's on that drive. So just bear that in mind before you do this. So make sure that's clear. And then we can go about extracting the files from the download onto that drive. So we're basically going to extract the downloaded folder into this USB drive and then you'll be able to use that once we get into the BIOS so you can then use the tool in the Gigabyte BIOS in order to sort that out. So you should find that once that's complete you have a bunch of files in there. What you want to do then is restart your machine and when that is happening make sure that you start to mash to the delete key on your keyboard until you enter the BIOS. So you will then enter the BIOS and you should see it looks something like this. You can see on the left hand side this is BIOS version F2. I need to make sure we go into the advanced mode 
and then down in the bottom right you'll see there's an option for Q Flash, which you can press F8 to access instead. Q Flash is basically the tool which will run the BIOS updater and you'll need to use this. So here you can see a couple of different buttons that you need to press to go through this process. So first of all, you click on the file up here. I found that I'd click on it a couple of times and hopefully it will be recognized. You can see that this is here with the right labeling on it. So F5F was the name of the file on that drive so it's automatically found it based on the usb ports and then you click to run and then click to update the bios and it will then go through and verify the settings now i want to say here that this bios update took quite some time and the machine powered on and off multiple times during the process so make sure you don't panic don't touch your machine don't power it off manually just wait and it was a painful amount of time much longer than other BIOS is updated lately. So don't panic too much if you see it going on and off and the display isn't working for what seems like a long time. You will find eventually that it does boot back up and then you should find yourself either back in the BIOS or back loading Windows. So you can see here a few minutes later, it's then loading up and I'm going to go back into Windows again. So obviously we want to go back to the BIOS to check a couple of things because there are some important settings you need to change. So restart your machine again, mash that delete key again, and then you should find the BIOS looks something like this. On the left-hand side, you can see it's now BIOS version F5F. It's the newer updated BIOS version. But updating your BIOS will have reset some things. So for example, it will have turned off XMP for your RAM. So we'll need to turn that back on as well as resizable bar support, which will help improve your GPU performance as well. So down the bottom left, extreme memory profile, turn that on to XMP and then turn on resizable bar support. And that's a couple of the minimum sort of things that you should change. Now under the advanced mode, I want to point something out here. One of the BIOS updates that's important is the settings that's changed at the top here got Intel default settings. As default, it goes to extreme. If you want to go for a bit cooler settings, you can try performance mode instead. Another thing that's been changed is in the advanced CPU settings. So in here, alongside a lot of other changes, there's the IACEP, which is the current excursion protection. This BIOS update has tweaked this to set it automatically to disabled, which will then help with performance. Uh, Gigabyte says that this is in line with Intel's recommendations, but also should help improve overall performance and stability. Stability is the main reason why you want to update the BIOS for Intel 13th and 14th gen CPUs. So this is actually very handy, along with other settings in the BIOS. This is one of the main things that they've changed with this BIOS update. You can see along with other performance changes, this ensures the same performance at lower CPU operating temperatures, as well as an improved stability and high efficiency safeguarding your CPU over time. So you should find that hopefully your CPU will last a good while. Then you want to basically go into just save and exit from here and make sure your settings are being applied and then restart. And then hopefully you should find that you can then game away happily. And I would recommend doing some benchmark tests to see if your performance changed and maybe your cooler is running a bit better so your CPU is not quite so toasty. But I found the experience was definitely better like this and I'd highly recommend updating the BIOS on any Gigabyte motherboard or any Z790 motherboard for that matter and making sure you've got the better performance out of your machine and longevity. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to related content, which you also might enjoy. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching.